make you, I want it to make you think differently about cycling. Think differently about where you can where you can go on a bike and how far you can go on a bike and what you can carry on a bike. Right, we're back again. Um, this time we are here to have a chat about this, the Alice, um, the all new Alice. So we thought we would come and have a sit down again as we did with the Sirius and find a bit more out about the Alice, where it's come from, what you can do with it and why we think it's probably the best gravel, I'll use that term. Adventure. Bike. Adventure. <laughs> um, gravel slash road slash adventure slash yeah, bike packing. Don't know. We'll do some editing. It's a great bike. <laughs> yes. um, yeah. So um, let's start with what is what is this bike? I'm sure a lot of people look at it and go, hmm, it makes some kind of noises. That looks interesting. But what what is it? Um, it is it's, it's an adventure bike, and, and I know that's kind of a catch-all. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you, if you think bike, you know, gravel's become the thing. But gravel, how do, how did you find what gravel is? Um, you know, for many people, it's just about getting onto trails which aren't necessarily a mountain bike, you know, which you can't, won't specifically say are mountain bike trails, but it's kind of everything in between. Um, but let's just answer the question, what, is, what does Alice mean? You know, it's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, it's a sort of play on Alice in Wonderland, this <laughs> idea that every, any journey, any ride is an adventure. Um, but it's actually a, uh, it's a military acronym, all-purpose lightweight individual carrying equipment all right so the idea is that it is a bike that yes you can use for bike packing it is your carrying equipment to take you as far as you want to go let's get down into some details what is it about this bike that makes it the alice okay well i think one of the defining things about it is that it is a a large tired gravelly mm. style bike so if you look at it from the side, you know, aesthetically, it's going to look like many other gravel bikes that are available right now. But its defining feature is that it can take up to a 2.4 inch tire very, very easily. Um, most frames can, but the fork will as well. So where most frames are designed, you know, have the clearances to, to fit larger tires, the limitation on most other bikes is that, you know, because the axle to crown length is usually, th uh, say, 395, it maxes out uh, typically, say, a 40 millimeter knobbly tire or a 50 mil mm. slick. Um, what we've done here is we've got gravel type or adventures type geometry, but we've designed the frame specifically around our own fork, which we'll take uh, in the front, you know, if you wanted to, to put a 2.8 in. Not that you would, but the point is the axle to crown will accommodate a large, a large volume tire. Okay. And let's think about some of the features we've got on this Alice, because this is, this is the new version. This is the new this version. Is this version two? Uh, this is version three, actually. Version three. Yeah. So this is version three of the Alice. Um, what's changed? What's new? Um, OK, from the, well, geometry-wise, we've steepened up the seat angle by about a degree. We've slackened the head angle by about a degree, which has allowed us to sort of push the length forward a little bit more. Uh, by slackening the head angle, it means that off-road capability, uh, you know, tackling obstacles is going to be a little bit easier. You're not hitting sort of blunt objects um, as hard as, as you would on a bike that's, say, got a 70, or 70 to 71 degree mm -hmm. head angle. That, that's quite significant. Um, we're more centred in the bike with the steeper seat angle, but that's, that's just the way it is. Um, the other feature which we've got is a split dropout at the back. Okay. So if you want to run a belt drive, um, say a gate system, then it's an easy split. And so that, that's, another, that's another feature. Um, the fork is flat mount. Mm -hmm. um, we have a chromo fork as well, which is flat mount too. Uh, that's the, more or less the same length as this one. So again, large volume. And it will take a dropper post if you want to run a dropper post on a, on a bike like this. Cool. So we've got some, let's call it modern geometry. <laughs> um, we've got dropper post routing. Um, we've got the sliding drops um, yeah. and a split for belt drive. Yeah. Um, super big tyre clearance. 
Um, we've got one built up here that's a drop bar. Yeah. Did you envisage this as a, as a drop bar only bike? No, not as, the, the difference between a drop bar, well, in terms of the length of the bike that you're gonna ride between a drop bar and say a flat bar is, is probably gonna be one size. So you're gonna, you're gonna make a choice on, on, the, on the bar that you're gonna use. Um, people are gonna build it up differently. For some, a drop bar is gonna be the way to go. Um, if you can go, say, for example, full GRX or, or the equivalent in, in, in other brands. Um, but the beauty of a bike like this is if you, run, if you set it up with a flat bar or a sort of mountain bike style bar, then you can be using a mountain bike group set for a wider range of gears at the back and potentially um, the ability to hang more kits off the, off the bars as well at the front. So, I think that's, that's an interesting one you touch on with the different bars because there was a time when it was, are you a you know, flat bar, mountain bike bar, yeah. or drops? Yeah. Um, are you one or the other? But now there's all this stuff in between with bars of shapes, not just the Jones bar now, but all the other ones. So it's not quite as simple, is it? But you can you could ride any bar. Well, you could you could ride any bar. I mean, yeah. as, you, as you say, the choices are immense nowadays. Yeah. And I think, you know, people are looking for comfort. They're looking for versatility. And if you're looking for long, you know, if you're considering long distance riding, where you're wanting your, your kit to be uh, well supported, you're wanting as much comfort for, with regards to the positions that you've got with your hands. I think there's some fantastic options out there for, for bars. And some of the flat bars, if you can sort of use that generic term flat bar, um, offer many of the hand positions that these do without necessarily the aero drop um, and are incredibly comfortable. And once you get off road, the, the, the greater width, um, make a lot of sense on a bike like this. And I, I think you touched on versatility, and I think that is the, the major thing for a bike like this, is for the Alice, is that versatility. It's almost limitless. I mean, if you, you can put massive tires on, you can put slick tires on, drop bars, flat bars, this yeah. could be your commuter bike, yeah. or it could be your, you know, massive Scottish bike, bike packing <laughs> yeah. adventure bike. Yeah. And it's still going to ride down single track and does, yeah. you know, uh, really well and in a way that puts a smile on your face rather than simply surviving. Yeah. I think that's what I found by going for bigger tires. Yeah. Is, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you consider the geometry of this, I mean, we, we, we might think it's fairly conservative by today's stat. Well, yes, it's progressive. It's, it's fairly conservative by today's standards when you compare it to a mountain bike. But if you were to compare it to mountain bike geometry 20 years ago, this would be pretty radical, you know, a 69 degree head angle. Mm. You know, the standard back in the day was like 71, 73. This is, you know, it's moved on <laughs> from there. And so, yeah, with larger tires, it's, yeah, it should be very, very capable on the kind of single track that you talk about. So, and, you know, the sort of long distance all day kind of riding. And, um... Yeah, this isn't guesswork. We, we know this because this isn't the first version of this. So perhaps a good question is the origins of the Alice because uh, yeah. this isn't new, is it? No. We've seen, we've seen some gravel bikes. We're exploring all this new gravel bike stuff, but the Alice is not a new concept for no, it's I not. Dream. No, it's not. I mean, we, we, um, we look to, the, to other parts of the world. We see kind of what's happening in there. And, you know, back in the, around about 2014, uh, sort of gravel riding was starting to evolve in the US. It was it was people taking cross bikes, trying to squeeze sort of mountain bike sort of style, well you know bigger bigger tires on the, or taking taking the cross bikes and realizing actually maybe we can take these further than it's just you know a loop around a racetrack, and and so gravel riding started to evolve, and it became sort of the fastest growing segment in the states around about 2014 15, and so we started. Um, so we designed a bike back then, uh, had it custom built uh, in a small batch factory. Um, and we, I think we took the first one to Sea Otter in, I think it was 2015. Um, and so that, that was our sort of first attempt at a gravel slash adventure bike. But even then it was different. Uh, we, we weren't taking, um, we, we weren't, you know, choosing like a, what do you call it? an off-the-shelf carbon fork, because it was very, very clear to us. I mean, we come from a sort of mountain biking background, but it was very, very clear to us that there's a degree of comfort that you appreciate having ridden a mountain bike for a while. 
and there's and also the grip that you get from larger tires so immediately we were different from what uh, what uh, from other products that are on the market because we could fit a large tire into our frames it was designed around a, a slightly longer uh, longer fork so from the very very beginning it was different um and it was immensely fun you know it became a bike which was you'd grab it for ride from your house kind of go anywhere and yeah it was it was just a good fun bike i think tire size is everything when it comes to making your gravel bike the right thing for you as a rider yeah um and i spent a long time trying to fit bigger and bigger tires into gravel bikes um and couldn't get them as big as i wanted and now i've gone to 2.1s 2.2s yeah with a low profile tread and like that makes more sense yeah and i think it's tuning your tire size to the terrain you're on yeah so maybe if you're riding the perfect gravel it's all super smooth and like you know wonderful like we see in america i don't have a lot of that to ride um i end up riding sort of mountain bike light <laughs> yeah and i want some big tires yeah. and i'm just like i'm never going back i don't think yeah to, to that well i think i mean it, it's it's stating the obvious to say that you know the tires are your contact patch with the ground yeah. and you know the the better the grip uh the more comfort you can get from from your tires you know the more comfortable you are and the further you're likely to go and the, and the more challenging terrain you're likely to 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 encounter and once you start loading a bike up with kit i mean it's around about the same time that um you know gravel biking sort of, or gravel cycling was evolving there was a move there was a shift away from you know panniers and you know heavy loaded kit to sort of lightweight bike packing stuff which suddenly evolved and now you could carry more because it was lighter and so you need to consider that if you're going to have an adventure bike which you're taking off road and you're going to load it up with another i don't know 10 kg of that's probably more than you well well certainly more kilograms of load then big tires and a larger volume certainly makes more sense not just for comfort but just for puncture protection as well you know you can go further you can handle more if your bike can carry uh if, if your large tires can carry more load so there's some common sense um you know involved as well so for some folks they might look at this and go are we just reinventing mountain biking have we gone full circle and now we're looking to put bigger tires on and wider bars and increase the performance of these to a point that we are back in the 90s of mountain biking um i don't think so i think i mean th th again this is an oversimplification uh, you know, if you wanted to define a mountain bike, I think one of the, 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 the significant things that it would have is a suspension fork. Yes, you can do it rigid, but, but a mountain bike, by my definition of a mountain bike, is that it's designed to take a suspension fork. So consequently, you end up with certain, uh, a certain kind of geometry or frame, sh frame shape because of that. Because of the, like, say, the minimum axle to crown, you would get, which is say a 483 on, on a mountain bike, you're gonna have a short, you know, to have the sort of stack that you'd expect, you'd have a shorter head tube, which is gonna end up with a, a more compact front triangle. And so if you're thinking adventure, and, you know, as we just touched on, you know, bike packing bags and, and frame, frame bags, fitting those within the, the, the front triang triangle as an example, there's certain limitations which immediately are imposed on the bike if you decide to put a suspension fork in the front. You know the front end is going to be compressed. You don't you you lose a lot of this space here. So if you, so yes, you could put this side by side with a with a, a mountain bike which potentially has um, similar angles. But as soon as it has a longer fork, you're going to lose a significant amount of space from the front triangle. So I'd say yes, potentially you could convert a mountain bike into a an adventure bike but if you're wanting a sort of purist or a, a really, really versatile bike which will do pretty much okay if you were to load up a, a mountain bike with kit to take it off-road i think this bike would actually offer more versatility would take you further you're going to lose significant amount of weight by using a rigid fork you're probably going to take at least uh, you know a kilo out of it which allows you to take more kit 
because it's always a compromise. How much kit are you going to carry with you? Where are you going to put it? Um, and if it comes down to, I mean, you, you're not you're not going to be racing down off-piece stuff if you're out in, in the back of beyond. You know, for me personally, I'm wanting a bike that will get me as far as I can. It's going to be relatively light, and, I, and I'm not thinking to myself, you know, what am I going to leave behind? I, I'm generally trying to think, what can I take that's going to make the ride, make the adventure, make the whole experience better? And I think this is where a bike like this, you know, ticks those boxes personally. So the latest version of the Alice, we've got a new color. Yeah. Yeah, this is the desert color, which we're using on the Moxie as well. Um, but yeah, so this is a gloss. Uh, the other two are, are Wonderland Blue, which we've had from the very beginning, and the other, which is a classic British racing green. So both of those are a sort of semi-matte. Okay. Um, but this, yeah, this is the, uh, the, the latest addition to the color scheme. And um, sizing. So obviously, those familiar with Pipe Dream will know that our sizing tends to be long and longer, or longish, long, longer. Yeah. Um, we've not done that with this one. This no. is a small, medium, large, extra large. Yep. Yes, correct. Okay. So there's four sizes to choose from. Yeah. Um, so if you head to the website, you would look at four different sizes, and we've got the geo charts up there, yeah. and you can tune in and get some advice from us if you need to. Yeah, sure. And then we've got fork options. We've got a carbon fork here. Yeah. But that's not the only fork option, yep. No, we've got a chromo fork as well. Um, so, the, so the carbon fork um, will, you know, will take, uh, we'll use an external headset. Uh, the, the chromo fork will use an integrated if you want to do that. I mean, in fact, you can run them either way. But the okay. point is that they're both exactly the same length. Um, we should say when one fit, once fitted, they're not going to affect the geometry. Okay. So you've got the two options there. Yep. Um, but the, the steel fork's got a straight steerer and the carbon one's tapered. Correct, yeah. So, in, in, so that actually makes the swap really easy. So yeah. you just put a crown, so it means you can actually have the same headset on this one. If you decided yeah. to pop the chromo fork in, you just put a headset, a crown adapter on it, pop it straight in, yeah. and there's, there's no messing around with the lower caps. And uh, for clarity, this fork is black, as we can see. This fork is black. Uh, we have a very small number of black forks, but the, the, the proper finish will be uh, color matched to the frame. Okay, and that's carbon and steel. Carbon and steel, correct. Okay. Great. Um, what are the advantages of the carbon fork over the chromo <laughs> fork? Is that a good question to ask? Um, I don't know. Okay, that's what's fine. The, can, yeah, what's the advantages? Um, th there's always going to be people who want to run a carbon fork. Okay, if, if you were going to ride this on the road and you just wanted uh, maybe a degree of extra comfort, um, yes, a carbon fork is lighter. Um, it's got maybe better vibration damping. Uh, that that would be probably the most significant difference. Um, okay, I'll put you on the spot now. Um, let's, let's think about the way, for some inspiration, how we might build up an Alice if someone was having a think. So, someone wanted a Alice for commuting or kind of urban bike. How would you build it up? Um, I'd probably go with the Chromo Fork personally. Um, and okay, if you're going for commuting, you're probably wanting a value bike that just you know does it all any other day, any day, um, and you know depending where you can lock it up or where you can put it, you, you're wanting something which is a, a workhorse. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the one of the things about this bike is that if you've got say for example you know a set of old 142 wheels in your garage which you don't mm -hmm. know what to do with, uh, the 29ers or even if the 650B for example. Um, it's the kind of thing which you can slot in this, no problem at all. If you've got parts in a bucket from an old mountain bike, again, it can go straight onto this kind of thing. If that's if it's a commuter-style bike, um, most people have got kit kicking you around, or it's relatively easy to get that kind of stuff cheap. So that would be my... I don't think anybody's going to build, like, the the ultimate commuter bike and, put, and throw tons and tons of money to it. Well, that's it. I think when I think of this, I think... Slide in dropouts, you go single speed. Single speed. Yeah. Old set of mountain bike wheels, yeah. um, flat bar, radio yeah. parts bin, yeah. threaded bottom bracket, normal headset, you know, quite easy exactly. to get, fixed post. I think you could build something up yeah. pretty quick and without huge expense on, on the parts. Well, exactly. Yeah. Um, and you get to ride a cool bike. Yeah. I mean, I, I've done it myself. You know, th th through the, the different iterations I've had over the years have been, you know, raiding the parts bucket. 
and and it's been a very very capable bike yeah. um it's had flat bars on it it's had drop bars i've eventually settled on, on a sort of flat um shaped bar and for me that's been the most versatile for yeah the kind of riding which you know i, I was looking to do on it um what about multi-day bikepacking adventure what would we do to this frame how would we build it up well, I have a mountain bike bias. I know. I mean, I've spoken to people who who love drop bars. I mean, I I do like the comfort of a drop bar. I do like being on the hoods, um, but I rarely use the drops personally. And I and I know, you know, I, I think there is certainly an argument for using the drops. My personal preference has been to to have mine set up with a Jones bar, um, and you know that gives you you know nice back sweep very very comfortable position it's got the width so again it's it's very very easy to maneuver the bike uh there are loads and loads of different hand positions so it sort of mimics the positions of the tops of this bar very very well um and then the other beauty of a flat bar is that you can put mountain bike components on it which, which are generally cheaper yeah. than road bike components mm -hmm. well specifically the levers and the shifters yeah. what about gravel racing or gravel events. They tend not to be a race, but imagine you're doing a 200K, 300K fire road yeah. event, time trial. Yeah. Would it work for that? Absolutely it would. I mean, I, I think the, the, the kinds of riding, or I should say that these kind of events are, might be what we would consider cross country mountain bike races 20 years ago. And so it sort of blurs the lines of, you know, what is gravel, what is adventure? Uh, these, these events, uh, or maybe a little bit more taxing. They're like an endurance event, but you want a fast bike. And I think this is where this really comes into its own. It's got, you know, pretty aggressive sort of speedy geometry um, with a rigid fork up front. It does keep the weight down. And the, the, yeah, there is actually an advantage over potentially a, uh, a suspension fork if you're looking at those kind of distances by taking the weight out and yeah, I, I've, I found I can really munch the miles uh, on this. And when I've ridden with my wife and she's been on one of these and I've been on a mountain bike, by the time we're three hours into a ride, yeah, she's making ground quite easily. Uh, so I think it's a fantastic adventure racing bike. Yeah. If you could only have one bike from the Pipe <laughs> Dream stable. <laughs> well, it's a funny, I mean, yeah, the question we get asked all the time is it's a funny one. Um, I hate to talk about lockdown, I hate to talk about COVID, but the thing is, last year, it was the bike I literally rode every single day. Yeah. Um, and yes, there was limitations to how far we could ride, but the point is, it's, it can pretty much handle, you know, from your house to a long way out into some really nice <laughs> areas, you know, and... Yeah, if you're riding with, with family, if you're riding with people who aren't necessarily mountain bikers, and that, and that may be... Okay, I had a conversation with someone the other day, and, and they were talking about how they've been riding more with sort of gravel crowd, and all of a sudden they've discovered trails on their doorstep that they would never have considered before. They're riding further than they've ever ridden before, and they're enjoying riding more than they've ever ridden before, because it's not the, the, like, okay, wind yourself up to the top of the hill, hurtle down this you know, death-defying, whatever it is, off-piece, yeah. bragging rights at the bottom, woo-hoo kind of thing, um, which takes, you know, five or ten minutes. They're actually going out there. They're taking in the scenery. Mm -hmm. And so this is... So in some ways, and part of it comes down to maybe my age as well, um, I think one of the things I sometimes miss out on when I'm mountain biking, I'm hurtling down the, the hill. It's like I don't see what's around me. And I have to keep reminding myself, why am I even going out there? Why am I doing this? Yes, there's the thrill element to it, but I just have a love for the outdoors. I have a love for, it. in some ways, just taking my time out there. And this bike is one of these ones where you can take your time to enjoy your day out on, on the ride. <laughs> you can go a long way you, comfortably. You can go a long way with, with equipment. I mean, if we, just coming back to the front triangle, I mean, I, I had a, a, a half bag in my bike I'd load, I'd have my, my bottles on it, which would be good for, I don't know, three or four hours. And I have enough tools to rescue me if I got into a silly situation. 
and the extra bits and pieces of want to you know carry a little stove and make a coffee i mean that kind of stuff so i think it comes down to you know if someone was to say to me you could only have one bike i'm going to take all of them away for you all the other ones away from you i think i would actually i would honestly say i would have this over any other bike because i know that i could do more on this and go further on this and it will be the most versatile bike um, out of the lot. Yeah, but buy the other ones as well. <laughs> but, <laughs> but buy all forget, of them. Yeah, don't forget we have other bikes. Yeah. Um, I think that's really, it's, it's really nice. I mean, that that's sort of describes it kind of perfectly, I think. It's, it's a bicycle for the cyclist, I suppose, well, to someone who's really wanting a genre or a niche you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's broad in its scope. Well, I think this, this is it. I mean, if you, if you look at a full suspension bike, well, that, that is it. It is broad in its scope. You know, a full suspension bike is designed to offer a degree of comfort to, to handle technical trails and isn't particularly suited for adventure riding or bike packing. There's, you know, there's a limit to how far you can go, what you can do with it. A mountain bike, yes, it will go so far and then it re reaches limitations. This, I think, in, in terms of distance, will go further. It will go into the wilderness. It will carry stuff, and it will be enjoyable. I don't think you're going to be, well, even, even from my own experience, you know, going out for, for a big, long day, um, I have I've felt confident. I felt competent on the bike. I haven't felt limited. And again, because we've sort of modern you know, thanks to modern geometry, we can actually ride trails which um, we can enjoy those sort of single track descents and, and whatever else. You know, brakes are better, tires are better, you know, good grip, you know, even with, even with the thing loaded up. Um, it's, yeah, it's a very, very competent bike. The intent of it is to be a bike that allows you to carry what you need as far as you need to go and yeah, it, it is a bike that I want. I want it to, you know, make. I want it to make you think differently about cycling, think differently about where you can where you can go on a bike and how far you can go on a bike and what you can carry on a bike. Um, and you know, so many of, you know, sometimes we, yeah, it, it might take however long to walk into a place, but you can get there four times quicker on a bike like this and do an overnight with a tent, um, that is something which can be easily carried on, on, on this kind of machine. Um, so yeah, I think it, it's, it's about having you know, a genuine <clears throat> adventure bicycle.